Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Philips 5515 color TV pattern generator. This one is not only doing PAL or NTSC, it's actually doing all the different versions of PAL and NTSC. There's also another one that is called 5518. And that one also can do all the different modes of CCAM. With the buttons here, you can change the different test patterns from color bar, grayscale, burst, and all sorts of things. And you can, as far as I understand, combine the different pictures so they will kind of be mixed or added together. I look forward to play with that if that is really the case. We got a video output here with variable level. And I think if you go, yeah, see the click here, then it says a fixed standard mode. And the same with uh, the chroma level, you can go click and then it's the correct standard level. Also, this one contains an RF modulator for testing TV sets or anything with a receiver. And you can even use an, um, a connector on the back for input video signal. And this is here, video extern. Then you take your external video signal in and it gets RF modulated and then you can have your own little TV station. And so I think half of this display is doing all the video channel sets up and everything like that. And I think this whole unit is a completely digital uh, modern type of product. So I expect it to be super duper nice and stable. I found uh, one more of these on eBay for about $500 plus shipping. So it looks like there are still something people buy and sell and uh, use for something like that. That will be the mode switch where you can see the different PAL and NTSC modes supported. And obviously this uh, switch here is blanked, so it is not available with the CCAM modulations in this one. I think it's pretty cool with the SCART connector directly for your VCR. You can also put in audio. See, subcarrier, synchronization and RGB outputs as well. Super nice. So this unit is absolutely beautiful designed inside. I see a lot of cool things to begin with. You can see the thermal design, all the holes here at the bottom to make air possible to yeah cool down everything. Also, the top and bottom are the shields. They're full of cooling holes so our air can go through. So really, really nice. So far, I have um, found that the three potentiometers here, they move really, really badly and need a little bit of cleaning and lubrication. So I will try and uh, play with that. The holder here for all the plug-in boards, they're still sealed. So that means nobody was in here and poking around with this. So that is good so far. I see a few crystals, oops, yeah, here we go, some crystal oscillators and all that down there. And that's, of course, for the different standards. You need different frequency uh, generators. I also see some text written down here. CCAM module is not mounted, teletext. And here you got an optional stereo module. I wonder what the different modules are, are doing uh, around here. I think this is the graphic uh, graphic module. See, we've got tons of counters or shift registers to output all the graphics. And that's an EEPROM containing the different pictures, obviously. And um, down here, the power supply. See, all the hot regulators, they're mounted directly on the outer chassis. Very good thermal decision. There is, however, one little dumb thing that I found so far, and that is a 
bridge rectifier, the tiny one down there. I don't know if you can see this, but the circuit board around this is all black. So that means this one runs really, really warm. And there's a huge bridge right next to it. And that runs cold. And there's plenty of room for two big ones. I mean, really? I don't see any leak around the capacitors or anything like that so far. So that is good. We got um, the main CPU here is an 8085. And that is uh, one of the support input output chips. Um, yeah, that one there. And that is, of course, the software in the EEPROM. We got a battery right there. And I think this handles um, so you can remember the different frequency settings for the RF generator. Because why else would you need a battery right there? And the thing is, this is there's zero volts on this lithium battery. And they tend to leak and uh, create all sorts of uh, corrosion all over this area. So there is no other way than remove this and mark real carefully on the board with a permanent marker this is positive and negative and three volt so it can be mounted and restored in the future but it must be removed before it leak and cause all sorts of additional damage see here is the bottom of the main board look at all the cooling holes i love it nice nice thermal design got a little oops timing fixy fixy here and a few missing signals or probably some uh, additional features or something like that. Really difficult to see those thin, thin wires. And they didn't add a little drop of glue to support those wires. So this is a little bit dangerous, to be honest. But now at least we have documented where they are mounted. I don't know if we can see exactly where they go. That one there goes right there. But I think I will put them carefully in there and add a little drop of contact glue on each end. So it is nice and good. Yeah, this you see right there. This is actually the original... Um, residue from cleaning the board when it was soldered you can see it is cleaned and then the cleaning fluids evaporates and leave some stuff like that if you wash it two times in new clean uh, fluids then this goes of course away but that is not what they have done here i also like the way that the chassis is mounted using the screw, so you just take them out a little bit and then you can open the, the chassis. So that is, uh, yeah, pretty good design. So let's look a little bit on the different circuit boards we have in this unit. So the first one to the right in here, it has to be the graphic card. I mean, we've got an EEPROM here. I bet this contains all the different test pictures and all this is used to clock the pictures out they just call this a digital print and oh, it's written in german i guess so um yeah and it's a eight kilobyte right so that is all the graphics Look at that capacitor here. I think we have one that I need to replace. I think this is a little leakage. It didn't create any damage and it didn't go anywhere else, but I think I will change this one capacitor. And then the next unit here is the, it's written down there somewhere, PAL NTSC. So we have a PAL NTSC unit and I've written it down up here. So it's not going to cause me confusions because to the very left here we have another module and this is the hf module but what do you know let's put them i better put them like this i mean they look very much the same right and 
connectors they are also exactly the same no coding or pins or blocking or anything like that so that means you could easily swap these and plug them in wrong so it's the same case it's the same everything oopsie doopsie i better put the hf1 all the way to the left <laughs> I want to have them so I don't screw this up. And then the next module here is the RGB output module. It's also doing uh, synchronization, color burst output, and uh, a component output. So yes, we also have a component output. Isn't that just beautiful? And I double checked all the capacitors here. Nothing is leaked. So that is good. And then the module right here is um, multi-burst kais. So, so it's doing their burst. Multi-burst, hmm, yeah. And again, none of the capacitors are leaked here, so that is also very, very good. That IC up here runs a little bit warm. And we've got a little bit of uh, resolder jobs here. Oh, about resolder jobs. You've got to see this funny thing here. So this is back to the graphic card. See those two ICs here. They forgot to give them power on those two pins. A little bit funny. It's almost invisible, this little mod. And here we go inside the PAL NTSC module. And uh, here you go. One more leaked capacitor. So it even dripped down a little bit here on the bottom metal. So that means I need to double check and we don't have any leaked dripped dropped down there somewhere. So yeah, so far two capacitors found. And of course we find two more crystals here. So one is the 4.43, that will be PAL, and the other one should be 3 point something, right? Yes, 3.5, that is NTSC. So uh, and that will be the color burst oscillators, and then you switch between those. There's probably a little relay here that's doing that. Look at all those resistors here. What are they doing? All sorts of different levels and such. Cool. I don't think I want to go all the way into the RF section, but I believe here we got the different, uh, the PLL, uh, frequency synthesizers and all that. The, here's a mixer, output filters for the different frequency bands, because this one covers all the frequency bands for TV, and then you have the RF output, and this goes, of course, to just a potentiometer or attenuator like that. So nothing uh, fancy in here because they they soldered this together, and it's kind of not in sockets or anything like that. So it's going to be a little bit of a problem to pull this out. The last module in here is uh, the sound. So this is the mono. AM or FM modulator. And again, I don't find any leak capacitor, so that is good. I find it a little bit funny that we need that many components to do um, sound modulation, but oh, really? I don't understand why. Why is that so complicated? So I'll just remove the old capacitor. They are all the two broken ones. They're exactly 47, 10 volts. All other capacitors are different uh, type and they didn't leak. And um, so I'm putting in another one here. And look, look at the distance between the 
a pet in there between those three. I don't know if you can see this, but it's zero point nothing. That is very, very bad. Why not have a little bit more distance? That is a quality issue there. A problem waiting to happen. Another little free trick for you. See, when you take these shields out and you replace or repair and debug stuff like this, then it can be from minutes to hours or even days before you need to assemble this again. And then you forget how to do it. And you can see it's a little bit symmetric. See top and bottom here and top and bottom there. And we got some different holes for different adjustments. So obviously it needs to be put back correctly again. So to be able to figure that out, I always add some little lines like that. And now I can easily see how to put stuff back again correctly. I want to go and see if I can get this little battery cell out. But well, there's another little thing I want to show you. Look at this cable here. This goes to the entire front panel. So this is handling the, the readout, the display, all the many, many push buttons. And see, there's another little microcontroller here at the front handling display knobs and LEDs and whatnot. Everything here is done like that. So you have only one cable back to your CPU. Pretty neat. This is how you do stuff like this. So I think I'm done playing with this unit for today. All this of course is uh, still working. I just replaced a few capacitors and uh, removed the battery and uh, all is pretty fine. I just wanted to show um, a little bit of the different uh, features. So this is of course the color bar. And you can combine some of the features like the circle and the color bar. This one you can't. And then it kind of just turns off whatever you couldn't combine. But if you have a color bar and a grayscale, see, then you go like that. And if you turn off the color bar, you have grayscale. So these two can be combined. Then you have, um, I think it's the VCR and comp, no. Multiburst, yeah, okay, so this is the multiburst. You have different frequencies like that for uh, bandwidth testing. So the idea is you should see those lines all the way. And this reveals my screen here got a very low resolution. You just don't add up. As you can see, this screen is obviously not good for PAL video signals. Video extern. Oh, yeah, okay, then of course it dies like that. And here we got the RF uh, generator, and we could, yeah, make our own little TV stations if we want to. So I think that is all I wanted to show you, and uh, I hope you had a little bit of uh, fun. See you around soon. Bye bye.